one of the most popular picnic dishes I know are deviled eggs. So we're going to make some up. But before we get started on the eggs, I want to talk about the eggs. These are some fresh eggs from the hen nest straight to my plate. One of the ladies I work with happens to have hens and she gathers her eggs on a regular basis. She brings them up to work and some of the people buy them. So I stopped her and I asked her, Caitlin, what, what is this all about these eggs? I get my eggs in the dairy section at the grocery store. I've never bought them straight out of the nest. So she explained to me, these are fresh eggs. You don't have to refrigerate them. They will last two, three weeks just sitting on the counter. You can put them in the refrigerator and they can last up to two to three months. Because straight out of the nest, they still have all the natural bacteria that protects the egg. They haven't been washed or sorted or handled very much, just taken out of the nest, put in the container, and brought to me. So I was really skeptical. I set them on the counter, and we kind of stared at each other for a good week. Finally, I said, okay, we're having Sunday dinner. I'm gonna make some deviled eggs for appetizers. So I did, and I used the eggs, the hen eggs, not the duck eggs, and um, cut them up. Oh, the yolk was so creamy. And then I made my mix and put it all together. They were so good. I said, oh my goodness, I have to do a video on this. So I'm suggesting, I highly suggest, find someone who has hen eggs for you, fresh out of the nest, try them. They are so good. Um, I made scrambled eggs out of them. I've made an omelet so far out of them, and they are really good. They are very rich in color, and the flavor is so good. They're not strong. Um, I, I don't even know how to say it, except for the yolk is a little bit bigger and a little bit darker. But you'll see all that when we get ready to make ours. So these are our deviled eggs. I'm going to make a dozen today because I've got to take them to work tomorrow. I'm just going to take I usually like to lay them in here gently. The shells on these hen eggs seem to be stouter. I'm not even going to wash them. I'm just going to put my cold water on top of them, put them on the stove under a medium flame, and let the water come to a light boil. So there we go, straight in the pot. One important thing to notice, whenever you're handling chicken meat, eggs, any kind of poultry for that matter, after you've handled anything raw, then you need to make sure, even with eggs, even with eggs that come out of the grocery section, after handling the shell, cracking the shell, you need to wash your hands thoroughly as well. So we're filling it up until the eggs are totally covered and we're starting off with cold water because we don't want to put hot water on them and crack our eggs. And that looks pretty good right there. So there we go. Now off to the stove for medium heat. Okay, so we have our pot on the stove full of water, cold water. We're going to turn our burner on to a medium low. And there we go, flame down, medium low. Now most importantly as well is that we need to put it on to conserve our energy and help our pot boil faster. We have a nice light boil, maybe a little bit too hard, but it'll be okay. I'm going to turn the flame down just a tad, and then I'm going to put the lid back on it, and we're going to let it go for about four minutes. Then we'll turn them off. One of the things I want to show you is that when we have a boiled egg that we've taken out, and we've let it sit in the refrigerator overnight till the next day, and then you pull it out, and then you want to peel it. Well, the biggest problem that we have is usually the shell will stick to the egg and you cannot get it off because it will just crumble in little pieces like so. See how that's doing? And we don't want that. 
because what's going to happen is we're going to end up pulling our shell off with our eggs. Now if they're really really fresh you might be able to get them all in, off in one piece but the best way to do it so you don't have this problem <coughs> is to peel them when they are straight out of the hot pot. So now I have my steaming hot egg just taken off of the boiler and you can see it is so hot. But I'm going to run it under some cold water to stop the cooking process to cool it down a little bit. I'm going to try to do it over this bag. So I can, and I'm just going to peel a couple of these so you'll see how to do it. Now, there it is. So I should be able to handle it. Yeah. And so I have a little spoon right here. And I'm going to let my water drip a little bit. That's plenty. And then you have the big side and the little side, right? So you want to turn the big side up and that, there's an air pocket under there. So you want to hit that and break the air pocket. You can peel this back. I'll do another one. I don't know that you can see that. Then you want to take your spoon and these are nice and fresh eggs. So then they will slide right under the shell down and you twirl it and pull it right out of the shell. All in one piece and the flesh of the egg is not torn or ruined. So you can see. I'll do another one. I have a slotted spoon here, a vegetable spoon out of my serving set. That's what I use. See, it has holes in it. So then the egg can cool. Then I can do it. Again, Take the big side, flip it over, crack it like so, pinch the ends off, and you can see it's already lifting away. Then take your spoon, and with store-bought eggs too, it's the same way, but with store-bought eggs, you just have to be a little more delicate because they're older. These are very fresh, so the shell's going to peel really well. Put a little water in there to help it slide, and it'll slide right out of the shell. And then, what I do is I get them all peeled. I usually use a paper plate and a paper towel. I lay them on there, let them roll around, get a little bit dry, and then I can set these in a Ziploc baggie in the refrigerator so they're ready to go. Well, let's wrap up these deviled eggs and get them going. I went ahead and cut them in half, put the yolks over here, put the whites over here. I left one egg here so you can see how we did that. So basically, I don't cut mine through the middle like that. Okay, I cut mine from top to bottom. So this is our egg, big part, little part. So from the top to the bottom. So I'm going to cut it straight through the middle, straight down, and these are cooled as well. And then I'm going to pop this out. I just turn it over and kind of give it a little bend and a shake, and it goes in there for a little bit, gets left in there. Well, that's okay. And then I'll do the other one, and so there it goes. Very good. So there they are. So now I have my eggs. Now you can see how yellow these are. These are very yellow because they are the fresh hen eggs. And we're just going to break them up a little bit and we're going to start adding our bits to it to make it creamy and then we're going to re-stuff our eggs. So breaking it all up a little bit and I'm just using a regular old kitchen fork. Nothing fancy here. Okay. So this is what we're going to add to it. Now all of this is to your taste. All the seasonings is to your taste. There's a million ways to do it. Everybody's got a different recipe as we talked earlier. And so this is one that I like. I like it nice and tangy. I like the brininess of the olives. So that's why we do olives. Now, I always start with my mayonnaise. And in here I have two tablespoons of mayonnaise. And this is six eggs. So I've cut in half, so it's six yolks. So I'm going to start out with about one tablespoon of mayonnaise and I'm going to start with, this is a teaspoon of yellow mustard and I'm going to do about a half a teaspoon. I'm not real big on the yellow mustard, but I do like a little bit of it. Okay, and I 
am going to add a splash of the Worcestershire, which I like. So there's one splash. And this is optional as well. It's all optional. I'm going to do a splash of Louisiana style hot sauce. So just one little splash. You can do more if you want. I've got my no salt seasoning. I'm going to put in a little bit across the top. Not a whole lot. Maybe, maybe a fourth of a teaspoon. Then my regular kosher salt, I always use one good pinch, so that'd be about a fourth of a teaspoon. Some fresh cracked black pepper. And then for some other air, aromatics here, I do have a little bit of shallot. Now, if you like yours creamy and you don't want the crunchy texture of the olive and the onion in yours you can leave it out just add a little extra onion powder and that way you won't have bite into some people just don't like you know that crunchy texture in the middle of their soft egg so but i do so i always add a little bit of shallot and a little bit of green olive just trying to get that in there without spilling my olives all over okay. show you the difference so there goes my shallots. There goes about three little green olives. Now, these are my olives that I'm going to put on the top. They're for my topping. And so sometimes I use the colossal, but most importantly, we need to make sure that we have the pimento in the olive and we chop it up when we chop up the other one so you get the pimento and the green olive and you get the brininess and you get the green olive fresh taste and then we slice them so this is the little olive and you can see the difference this is a colossal and this is a regular size green olive you can use either one whichever one you like or have in the cabinet i keep both so this one is what i've cut into my little rings for my topping and as you can see i slice it to where i make sure that I get my little pimento sliced in there. And you just turn it and slice it and it'll come out like that. And I probably get about three rings out of one of these little olives. Now I get more out of the big one and this covers more. But these hen eggs are kind of small. The yolk is very large, but the white overall is small. So then we, we're just gonna mix all this up. And then if we need to make it more creamy, if it's not creamy enough, then we can we can um, add some olive juice and or more mayonnaise and then you just make it to your taste and I am not into all the fancy piping I am a home cook I love to cook I cook all the time and I just want to cook and get this on the table so I'm not trying to make it all fancy and put it in a piping bag we just do it country style and spoon it in although i live in the city um, so see now how creamy that is now you can just go with it just like that but i want a little bit more brininess to it so i have a tablespoon of olive juice here and i'm just going to spoon in about one teaspoon of that and we'll mix it around and see how that does because it's going to Thin it up a bit and we don't want it runny, but we want it malleable. We want it to be creamy. I think I'll add one more to it and I think we're there. And then all we have to do is stuff our eggs. Top our eggs. And you can make these as spicy as you want. You can add sriracha to it. Sometimes I like to just put a little squirt of the sriracha on the top and then put my olive right in the middle of that. So there we go. Nice and creamy. I think I might add a little more mayonnaise. And I do work in bits when I'm doing this. There we go. But look how beautiful and yellow those yolks are. I think they're going to turn out really well. Yeah, this is where you taste it. See if you like it. Got what you're needing. The 
just going to use my little fork here. Mm -hmm. Plenty soppy. We're ready. We're going to stop. We're going to stuff these eggs. So, and I just use a spoon to stuff them with. Get me a little spoon, the one I was using for the olive, just a tablespoon. I can get out of the drawer, eat your cereal with in the mornings. this in the middle for a piece of garnish. There we go. So take a big scoop and you just scoop it in. Smash it down and scoop it in. Remember we're not trying to be fancy here. This is just a nice little appetizer for a picnic or a barbecue. going the same way and this is a plate my daughter gave me so because I just she found it at an antique market so just go shopping at the antique market you might find you a pretty egg plate Louisiana hot sauce in there. So let's see. I think I've got some here. No salt seasoning. There's no salt in this. Oh, I missed one. Missed. Down there. I'm just going to do and hold it up high. You're going to make a mess. But then you'll get a light sprinkling all over everything. is messy. Okay, there we go. Now, that is some beautiful deviled eggs. So I hope you enjoy it. Make them for your next picnic or cookout and enjoy. So see you next week. Bye.